we are given the derivative of the vector valued function r of t has an x component of two plus six t, a y component of two sine t, and a z component of three e to the two t. We're also given that r of zero equals the vector five comma one comma two. We're asked to determine the vector valued function r of t. Recall that integration and differentiation are inverse operations, which means by integrating r prime of t, we can recover the vector valued function r of t. If we take a look at our notes below, the integral of f prime of x with respect to x is equal to f of x plus c. By integrating f prime of x with respect to x, we can recover the original function f of x. And we can use this idea again to help us recover the vector valued function r of t. We begin by integrating the vector valued function r prime of t with respect to t. Just remember when integrating a vector valued function, we integrate each component separately. If we let x of t, y of t, and z of t be the components of the vector valued function r of t, we can now say that x of t is equal to the integral of two plus six t with respect to t, y of t is equal to the integral of two sine t with respect to t, and z of t equals the integral of three e to the two t with respect to t. And now we'll consider each of these integrals. The integral of two plus six t with respect to t equals two t times six times t squared divided by two plus the constant c sub one. Simplifying, we have two t plus three t squared plus c sub one. From here, we'll now determine the constant c sub one because we're given r of zero equals the vector five comma one comma two. Because the x component is five, we now know that x of zero must equal five, which means if we substitute zero for t, x of t must equal five. Subbing in zero for t, we have two times zero plus three times the square of zero plus c sub one must equal five. Solving for c sub one, we have c sub one equals five. And now we know the x component of r of t is equal to two t plus three t squared plus five. And now let's consider y of t. The integral of two sine t with respect to t is equal to negative two cosine t plus c sub two. Again, notice the y component of r of zero is equal to one, which means y of zero must equal one, which will allow us to determine c sub two. We substitute zero for t and set y of t equal to one. This gives us negative two times cosine zero plus c sub two equals one. Be careful here, cosine zero is equal to one. So to solve for c sub two, we add two to both sides, giving us c sub two equals three. Now we know the particular solution for y of t. y of t equals negative two cosine t plus three. And then finally for z of t, to integrate three e to the two t, we need to perform u substitution, where u is equal to two t, and therefore du equals two dt. Solving for dt, we have one half du equals dt. Writing the integral in terms of u, we have the integral of three, and then dt is equal to one half du, and two t is equal to u. We have the integral of three halves e to the u du, which equals three halves e to the u plus c sub three, or three halves e to the two t plus c sub three. And because we know the z component of r of zero is equal to two, we know z of zero equals two, which allows us to find c sub three. We sub in zero for t, and set z of t equal to two. This gives us three halves times e to the power of the product of two and zero plus c sub three equals two. Notice here we have e to the zero, which is one. To solve for c sub three, we subtract three halves from both sides. Two minus three halves is equal to one half. We have c sub three equals one half. And now we know the particular solution for z of t is three halves e to the two t plus one half. And now we have the x, y, and z components of the vector valued function r of t. We now know r of t is the vector valued function where the x component is two t plus three t squared plus five. The y component is negative two cosine t plus three. And the z component is three halves e to the two t plus one half. I hope you found this helpful.